The blue catfish, Ictalorus furcatus, is the largest species of North American catfish. The current world record stands at 143 pounds, which was caught in the John H. Kerr Reservoir, Bugs Island Lake, located in Virginia. According to American Expedition, the average weight of a blue catfish is between 20 to 40 pounds. Given that the largest blue catfish ever caught was at the John H. Kerr Reservoir, you believe that the mean weight of the fish in this reservoir is greater than 40 pounds. Use the data below, which represents the summary statistics for the 51 blue catfish caught at this reservoir, and a 5% level of significance to test the claim that the mean weight of the fish in the reservoir is greater than 40 pounds. So that's our claim. Let's go ahead and mark that. So we're trying to test the claim. The mean weight is greater than 40 pounds. Starting with the claim and these problems is a great idea because it tells you first the statistic that you're testing. So we're testing a mean which tells me that I either will use a t distribution or a normal distribution to come up with my statistics in a bit when we get there. But we're testing the claim that the mean uh, is greater than 40 pounds and since that doesn't have a statement of equality that falls under the alternative hypothesis. If it did have a statement of equality, it would go in the null hypothesis. Uh, the complement is mu is less than or equal to 40, and you can put that for your null. Uh, it's becoming more common, however, to just put equals in the null. It doesn't make any difference in how you perform the test in the end. Now, what type of test should you conduct? Left tail, right tail, or two tail? Well, the symbol in the alternative is a greater than. And if you think of that as an arrow, it would be pointing to the right. So that helps us identify this as a right-tailed test. If it had been a less than, it would be left-tailed test. And if it was not equals, it would have been a two-tailed test. Identify the appropriate significance level. So the level of significance to use was 5%. And I'm just going to go ahead and change that to a percentage because I generally do that in the problem anyway. Now, calculate your test statistic and p-value. So here, you do need some technology to help you. And if you're using the TI calculator, that's great. That's what I use. You can follow along with me. If you're using anything else, just make sure you know how it works, that's all. But uh, if you press the stat key and go over to tests, then the first two items are z-test and t-test, which are the ones we have to choose between. So the thing that we have to make the decision is whether or not we know the uh, population standard deviation. In this case, we were never told what the population standard deviation was. We only have a sample standard deviation. So that points toward using a t-test. But there's one other thing we have to be certain of, and that's that the central limit theorem has been satisfied. And the central limit is that satisfied if you know that the original population is normal or approximately normal to begin with, or that you have a sample size that is larger than 30. And since our sample size is 51, uh, we're safe. We can just use that as our evidence. So t-test. You can input either from a set of data or the statistics of a set of data. And since that's what we have in this problem, we'll just use that. Mu sub zero is the null, uh, the mean in the null hypothesis, which is 40 in this problem. X bar, that is the uh, mean from the sample, so 40.81. SX is the sample standard deviation and n is the sample size. We have a right-tailed test, which is the greater than symbol, or just match the symbol here that's in the alternative. Either way is fine. Press enter, and we come up with our uh, statistics. So in our statistics, we've got the test statistic as 1.208, it looks like. And I'm just using three decimals because it's common. But 
use whatever's asked in the problem. And the p-value is the next item, so 0 0.1164. Okay. And the next thing is to uh, decide if we are going to uh, reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. And in order to make that decision, we compare the, val the p-value to the alpha level. The alpha level is 5% and the p-value is 11.64%. So the p-value is bigger than alpha. And the rule that I keep in mind is if p is low, the null must go. So if your p-value is less than alpha, you reject the null hypothesis. But in this case, p-value is greater. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So, uh, looking through these items, this one says reject the null, so that's out. This one says reject the null, so that's out. This says fail to reject, that's good, because the p-value is less than the significance level. But that's not true, the p-value is bigger than the significance level. So that leaves D, we fail to reject the null hypothesis since the p-value is not less than the significance level. Okay, let me grab that. Then the interpretive statement. So we have to decide if there is sufficient evidence to reject the claim, or if there is not, or if we're supporting, you know, those sorts of things. So each of these sort of begins with, there is sufficient evidence, there is not sufficient evidence. Um, this one sort of implies that there is sufficient And then there is not sufficient. Okay, so uh, to warrant rejection, so we reject the claim. This one's reject, this one's support, and this one is support. So uh, how do we decide which one we choose? The first part, whether we pick is sufficient or is not sufficient, really comes down to what our, our decision was. So if our decision is to reject the null hypothesis, then there is sufficient of something. So we failed to reject the null, so there is not sufficient of something. So we throw out that one, and we can throw out that one. So there is not sufficient of something. Either reject or support, we'll decide in a second. Now, reject or support. If we come back to the original claim, note that it is in the alternative hypothesis. And when the claim is in the alternative, you're trying to support it. If it's in the null, you're trying to reject it. So based off of that, uh, we can throw out B, and that leaves us this as our in interpretation. Now, if you want a little bit more idea as to why this works, um, the logic that fits there. So we're failing to reject the null hypothesis. So if we fail to reject something, we're, it's pointing in the direction of being true. So that means uh, the null hypothesis is like true-ish, okay? And so that means uh, the other one is in the direction of false. So I'm just going to say false just for argument's sake. So if we're saying the alternative is false, then we've effectively said the claim is false. So if you come down here to the interpretation, there is not sufficient evidence to support the claim. So we're effectively saying the claim is false. So that's how the logic basically works.